In this video, I wanna share some image processing techniques for deep sky astrophotography in Adobe Photoshop. This time, I really wanna focus on boosting colors and saturation in your deep sky images. If you're anything like me, you've been shooting a lot of galaxies lately, so all of the images, examples in this video are galaxies, and I'm gonna show you some really cool ways to really pull out that color without disrupting other things in your image. So let's hop into Photoshop and I'll show you what I mean. Here's a really good one for adding some saturation, some selective bright color to your image. And in this case, in M101, the Pinwheel Galaxy, I just wanna bring out some of those pinks and purples in some of the hydrogen nebula regions of the galaxy. So for that, we're gonna to go to the Select Color Range tool and then uh, from this drop down menu here, you want sampled colors. And I'm gonna go in, let me just close this and get it in a little closer now. With that eyedropper, I'm gonna select an area of that kind of pink hydrogen emission nebulae area. So uh, I think I'll grab a little pink from here and you can see the quick preview here. It's just selecting that color range. So those pinks and purples. Doesn't look like much from the original selection here, but uh, when we go into the Select and Mask tool, so Select, Select and Mask, here we can get a better idea of the mask and really refine it. So the first thing I'm going to do is move the shift edges. It's going to make more to add to that selection. And then I'm going to click move contrast up just a little bit so that separation between where the mask is and where it isn't and then the feather to soften up the transition areas between the mask. So I'm pretty happy with this one here. Maybe I'll soften it up just a little bit and then hit OK. And you're not gonna really be able to tell from this view uh, where of how well this is selected, but you'll see in a minute uh, of how well this works. So now I'll go into Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Vibrance, and we can name it if you want. I'm just gonna name it Vibrance 1. And now these sliders, it's gonna hide that selection mask and we'll be able to adjust the image and watch it in real time, the improvements that it makes. So if I just slide this saturation way up, look at those beautiful pinks and purples coming out. And even some of the warmer tones are coming with it because of that mask was you know soft at the edges. I'll move up the vibrance just for fun, just a little bit as well. And then you can go ahead and close that properties window and because it's created this new adjustment layer on top, we can quickly see the before and after. And in my mind, that was an improvement. Those beautiful colors. Probably a little too much for some people, but having the ability and the control to just boost those colors and not some of the noisy background colors is pretty incredible. Here's another example of just boosting the saturation in specific areas of the image. In this case, the warmer colors in both the galaxy and the stars in the image. Now this image of the Whirlpool Galaxy has been extensively processed already, but it's still a good case study to show you the power of the effects here. So again, we're gonna to go to the Select Color Range tool, and in the drop down for the selection, we're gonna do Sampled Colors again. And this time, I'm just gonna choose an orange star. Why don't we just get in there a little further. Get a nice zoom there, Select Color Range, sampled colors and we're going to pick the orange so you can see in the quick preview here it's of course selecting the warmer areas of the m51's companion galaxy as well anywhere that has those warm colors it's going to pick up so it's going to look like this marching ants all over your screen not exactly a great look so we'll go into the select select and mask tool which is definitely my favorite feature of photoshop overall with the shift edges, we're gonna just bump that out a little bit. I'm gonna just play with the sliders here and you can really manipulate your selection to, uh, to ensure you're selecting what you wanna select. Uh, the feather slider is probably the most important one here because you don't want those hard edges between your selection. And right now I'm holding down the space bar to, to grab this little hand to kind of pan around the image. I do wanna select those stars. There's certain times when you're gonna wanna just manipulate the, the, the saturation of your stars in your image. So you could use this tool too. In that situation, you would just use the brush here, click on that, and then hold down the Alt key, and you can just remove away the galaxy so you're just dealing with the stars in your image. 
In this case, we do want to boost the saturation in the galaxy as well, just so you can see the, the power of this effect. So this mask, I do want to pick up some more of those stars. I'm going to move the shift edges slider up, which is going to include more stars. And by changing the contrast, that kind of narrows it down a little bit. The feather I'm happy with. It's a bit much on the galaxy for this sake, but why don't we just go with that? So here's my image. It's selected a lot of the warm areas of the galaxy and these orange stars. And then again, I'm going to go into layer, new adjustment layer, vibrance. And it's going to give us the pop-up window to name it and this overly large window with the sliders. And we can make our adjustments and kind of pay attention to what's going on in the live image here. So just boosting those up subtly and you can see how fiery red the companion galaxy is getting. And it's kind of nice to, to play off the really cool blues of this galaxy. So if we really crank that up, you can start to see those really punchy colors coming out. I'm going to leave it at an aggressive 30 and 30 for both the vibrance and the saturation. And of course we have this layer on top to play with that we can turn on and off. Now if we look at some of the stars we adjusted, if we turn it off and on, a little more subtle, but those stars are definitely getting oranger and warmer. So pretty dynamic there. Maybe you're happy with this view. I'm starting to come around and want these really punchy, colorful image. I blame Dustin on that, but uh, I, I'm really liking the way this dramatic version looks over the original. I know that's not for everybody. So of course you can find that middle ground and uh, bump that down to 50% if you want. That's kind of a, uh, you know, that's a really smart thing to do because then you'll often find that it's like, you know what, the mix between the two is, is usually best. So if it's really blown out some areas and um, made some stars just overly contrasty and in vibrant, you can of course just go into that selection and manually uh, erase those areas. So I've got the little eraser, eraser brush here. Say I thought this star was a little too much. I can just click erase that star from my selection and then it's left from the original image and only the other areas are being manipulated. Okay, this one is really cool. This is something I kind of came up with recently and it's been super effective. Uh, I've had to come up with these creative ways to adjust my workflow based on galaxies with a sea of darkness surrounding them. In these images, there's a big open areas of dark black space. And depending on how bright your monitor is, you could probably see some of that color modeling and discoloration in the background sky around the M82 galaxy here. And so I, I found this way to be really effective and I think you should try this for yourself if you're kind of finding yourself in this situation. So again, we're gonna go with our trusty color range tool. Uh, and this time, just, just select the highlights. So we're just gonna create a mask around the, the data in this image, the signal that we've collected, but not that background space. So just kind of a rough selection to start with using the fuzziness and range sliders. Again, we're gonna go into the select and mask tool and refine that. And as you can see, the dark areas are what are not selected. The white are what are and using the shift edges slider, which is kind of hidden behind my picture here, but um, you should see it there in the select and mask. That one just kind of refines your selection. And then most importantly, especially in this case is the feather because you do not want uh, a hard edge between your selection and the background sky, um, especially in this case, you would really notice it. So I'm pretty happy with that and a pretty strong feather. So I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So if we control C or I guess command C on a Mac, copy our selection and paste it on top. And I just turn off this layer underneath. You can really see um, how feathered that edge is. And you might want to even do it more so than that, but that's kind of a good mix where we've made our selection with, without having that hard edge between uh, everything else. So I've just made a copy of that color precious signal data on top. And now just to be even more careful, uh, again on this background layer, I'm going to select color range and just do the shadows, which is the background space. Um, just again, a rough selection using the fuzziness slider here. And going to go into select and mask. And again, control that feather to make sure we have a smooth transition between the areas. 
I know it can be a bit confusing when you reverse invert the selection like this. So there's pretty good. I could spend more time uh, perfecting this, but I, I know that I've generally selected the background dark space. And just to be safe, I've got that color signal on top protected. So with that background black sky selected, I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, this time hue saturation. So on this layer, now we know we're just adjusting that background sky. We can move the saturation slider down and just close that window. And now when I turn it off and on, on my screen, because it's super bright, I like to keep it really bright when processing images to see those hidden underlying details. When I turn this layer off and on, I lose some of that green color modeling in the background and it just turns to that nice smooth black gray color. So I've desaturated that black space. And again, if I've overdone it, I can adjust this opacity slider here. We know that we've got our important details protected on top as well as through this selection of the background sky. And uh, if you followed along with that, I think you'll the wheels will start spinning and that's a very powerful way to kind of smooth out the blackness of your background sky. If you're dealing with an area with a lot of faint, subtle details, uh, like the integrated flux nebula around M81, M82, it probably isn't the best way to go. You might end up losing some really subtle details, but in, for all intensive purposes, if you just want to kind of smooth out that background sky, lose some of that color modeling, I've found this little selective desaturation technique to work really well. I hope you found these tips and techniques useful for your astrophotography images. If you like this kind of stuff, please subscribe to my channel. I have a lot more astrophotography tutorials to share. You can check out my website astrobackyard.com and I'll also put a link in the description for my premium image processing guide that goes over some more of the, the basics and the early stages of processing. Until next time, clear skies. Did you notice it? Did you notice it?